If you came to this video expecting me to tell you to eat the least amount of salt that you can to eat a very bland, salt-free diet in this video, then you're in for some pleasant surprises. You're gonna find out that salt is not your enemy when it comes to high blood pressure. And I'm gonna tell you what actually is your enemy later in this video. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 20 years of clinical experience. And in this video, I'm gonna tell you how to naturally lower your blood pressure without necessarily having to take medications and definitely without having to restrict your salt intake. First of all, let's talk about where did this low salt equals good blood pressure? Where did this hypothesis even come from? It started way back in the early 1900s. Uh, a French physician noticed that some of his patients with very, very high blood pressure were also, as he called them, salt fiends. They love salt and ate lots of salt. And so he developed an idea, which he then proposed as a hypothesis, that eating lots of salt raises your blood pressure. Now, that's good science up to that point. And the way science is supposed to work is when a, a doctor or a scientist comes up with a hypothesis then we're supposed to do controlled research to either confirm that hypothesis or refute it. That's how you're supposed to do that. And so the problem is, is then the, the next doctor we're gonna talk about is Dr. Lewis Dahl. And he came along in the 1950s and 60s and 70s. He did some research in rats that showed when you feed rats a very high salt diet, their blood pressure goes up. Now, first of all, you're not a rat. If, if you were, you wouldn't be watching this video. And so, although that might have supported the hypothesis of the original French doctors, it in no way proved this hypothesis was true. It didn't support this hypothesis because it was done in rats. But Dr. Dahl was very closely uh, related to the American Heart Association. He actually presented in front of the 1970s McGovern Commission, the same commission that Dr. Ansel Keys tried to, to uh, convince us all that eating cholesterol and eating high fat was bad for us. Dr. Lewis was also at that uh, Senate hearing and he, he presented his findings and his hypothesis that eating a high salt diet caused high blood pressure. So what's happened in the year since then? So basically, there's been some observational epidemiological research that has suggested that eating a higher salt diet might raise your blood pressure by one or two points, one or two milligrams of mercury, which is background noise. That, 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 that's not meaningful at all. Just imagine now, take your blood pressure, and then I said, oh, I can tell you to do something. It'll lower your blood pressure one point of systolic pressure and half a point of diastolic, you'd be like, okay, that doesn't really help me any. Well, that's what all the meaningful research on salt reduction shows that it does for your blood pressure. It lowers it about one point, okay? But since he was so closely related with the American Heart Association and the American Heart Association fell in love with the low salt hypothesis, so they made it part of their standard fare. Eat low fat, eat low cholesterol, and eat low salt. They even, it's, it, it is one of the foundational principles of their DASH diet. The, they, the American Heart Association and most other medical associations believe and promote a low salt diet, thinking that it will lower your blood pressure and therefore lower your risk of a heart attack or a stroke. The problem is, is all the controlled research that's been done about this topic, none of it has supported this hypothesis. And the way science is supposed to work is you have an idea, then you work that into a hypothesis, and then you do some, maybe some epidemiological research. And if you see an association there, then the next step in order to support your hypothesis and help it eventually become a theory or accepted fact is you do controlled research in humans and then if that research supports your hypothesis, then that hypothesis is promoted to a theory. Uh, at least that's how it works in other branches of science. It seems in nutritional science that it doesn't work that way, but that's how it's supposed to work. But the problem with the salt blood pressure hypothesis is that all of the meaningful research that was done, the control research in humans, 
didn't support the hypothesis. Now, what's supposed to happen in science is if there's lots of good, meaningful research that's done that doesn't support that hypothesis, that hypothesis is supposed to die. And indeed, that's what's happened to thousands of hypotheses in science over the decades is they, when you actually do the meaningful research, it's, it doesn't support the hypothesis. So that hypothesis falls to the wayside and we don't talk about that anymore. But what happened is, is the low salt hypothesis became tied up so intimately with the American Heart Association's message and, and their subsequent DASH diet that now they feel compelled to continue that message even though no meaningful control research in humans supports it. And you you might be thinking, that can't be true. So yeah, it's true. I have li a link down in the show notes below. A lot of this meaningful research that was done in humans in a controlled fashion, and it shows every single time that lowering your salt intake drastically may lower your blood pressure one point, but it does not decrease your risk of heart attack, stroke, heart failure. Indeed, eating too low of a low salt diet can actually be harmful for your heart and your other organs. Salt is an essential part of the proper human diet. You need to eat a certain amount of salt in order to have proper function, to have optimal function. And uh, it looks like in human beings, this amount is somewhere between three and 10 grams of salt every day. And so what I recommend that most people do, what I even recommend that you do, is to eat salt according to your taste. If your taste buds say that something's too salty, don't eat that. That's your body giving you a message. If, your body, if you take a bite of something and your body says, this is not salty enough, you need to, for your health, and for the deliciousness of your meal, you need to add some salt to that. Your body needs salt, just like all mammals' bodies need salt. Mammals will walk for miles in order to find a salt lick. That's what people out in the country call that. And it could be salty mud. It may be a salty rock. It may be a salt block that a farmer has put out for his or her cattle, sheep, goats, whatever, or that hunters put out for the wild game to come and get their salt. And they come to that not because they're gluttons, not because they're stupid, not because they haven't heard about Dr. Dahl's salt hypothesis. They come to that salt because they need it. If they don't get enough salt, they will die. And so will you. Having high blood pressure is not your fault, but it is your problem. And taking a handful of pills for the rest of your life is not a very elegant solution. Next, let's discuss what your blood pressure goal should be. And then I'm going to tell you how to lower your blood pressure naturally. Now, the American Heart Association and most other heart association, they keep lowering what is a normal blood pressure, don't they? And so currently, the recommendations for many of these organizations is that your blood pressure should be under 120 over 80. Some say even lower. Problem is, there's no meaningful control research in humans that shows that your risk of heart attack and stroke go down meaningfully if you keep your blood pressure this low. Also, when your blood pressure is this low, in many people, the risk of, of lightheadedness, dizziness, loss of consciousness, falling and breaking a bone go way up with a blood pressure this low. The American Academy of Family Physicians did not adopt the new American Heart Association ACC guidelines for blood pressure. The American Academy of Family Physicians still says that your goal for blood pressure should be under 140 over 90. And I totally agree with this. There are many other medical associations who kept the old guidelines as well because they know when you, and because the only way to get many people's blood pressure down under 120 over 80 is with prescription medications. There's no other way to do it. And so that's going to mean that, that there are millions of people running around taking one or two or three or four blood pressure medicines every day, trying to get their blood pressure down to this false goal, 120 over 80 under that. And they're going to wind up with all kinds of medications, side effects, and they're going to have an increased risk of bad things happening to them because for them, that's not a natural blood pressure level. You need to strive to get your blood pressure under 140 over 90. That needs to be your goal. There's no research that supports the 120 over 80 
That's another hypothesis that the meaningful research doesn't support. Now let's talk about the natural way to lower your blood pressure. Now, the majority of people, I would say 80 to 90, 95% of people who have high blood pressure, if they adopt this method, this natural method, this delicious method, they're gonna lower their blood pressure back to normal, which is under 140 over 90. There may be five or 10% of people who still have to take one blood pressure medication at a low dose, plus this natural method to get their blood pressure down under 140 over 90. The method that I'm talking about to lower your blood pressure back down to normal is to eat a low carbohydrate diet. Now, a low carbohydrate diet has so many health benefits that I've started calling it the proper human diet because it looks like human beings are by design a low carbohydrate intake mammal. So what you need to do is either download Chronometer or Carb Manager on your phone. It's a free app you can download and start tracking how many carbohydrates you eat a day. You need to count the total carbohydrates. The average person out there watching this video is eating somewhere between 150 and 350 grams of carbohydrates a day. That's way too many carbohydrates for a human to eat on a daily basis. And so the first step I would counsel you to take in this natural method is to lower your total carbohydrate intake to under 100 grams of carbohydrates a day and make that your maximum amount of intake every single day. Now you can do this deliciously, nutritiously, most of the low carbohydrate foods that you're gonna find that fit this way of eating are filled with vitamins and minerals and amino acids and fatty acids that your body needs for proper function. Now, 100 total grams of carbs may not do it for some people. They may have to lower their total carbohydrate intake to under 50 grams a day. Some few people may need to lower their total carbohydrate intake to under 20 total grams a day in order to get their blood pressure back under normal. I am one of those people. I used to have high blood pressure. I refused to take medication for it, even though I'm a doctor, I'm also hard-headed. And I wanted to lower my blood pressure naturally. And so now I eat a very, very low carbohydrate uh, diet and my blood pressure is beautiful on a daily basis. It's well under the normal level of 140 over 90. I've also included a research link in the show notes down below to a study done by the wonderful UK doctor, Dr. David Unwin, who did a study in his patients and he found that when they ate a low carbohydrate diet, all of their blood pressures returned to normal. And most of them were able to stop all of the blood pressure medication that they were taking, therefore eliminating all the copays and, and all the side effects and all the potential ramifications that come from taking several prescription medications together on a daily basis. I have multiple videos on this channel that explain to you how to eat a very low carbohydrate diet, all of the delicious foods that are involved in a low carb diet and all of the nutrition facts how, how many vitamins, where to get my minerals, where to get amino acids and fatty acids. I have videos about those topics on this channel. So please subscribe to this channel and click the bell notification button. And then that way you can come back later after you've watched this video and you can figure out how to eat a delicious, nutritious, low carbohydrate diet and get your blood pressure back down to normal. If you are already taking a high dose of a blood pressure medication, or worse, if you're taking two or three or four medications every day for your blood pressure, and you start to eat a low carbohydrate diet, then I would highly encourage you to buy a blood pressure cuff. I'll put a link down in the show notes to a good one. And check your blood pressure twice a day, because as you eat your low carbohydrate diet, your blood pressure is gonna to start to come down fairly quickly. And what's gonna happen is you're gonna to start to feel lightheaded and top heavy, and you might even feel like you're, you might faint. What that's telling you is the diet's working. And that also it's time for you to either decrease the dosage of one of your blood pressure medications or to stop one of them altogether if you're on multiple blood pressure medications. Now, I don't want you to start, stop, or change any blood pressure medication before you talk to your doctor. I also want you to be writing down your blood pressures. Take it in the morning after you've been up an hour and you're calm and relaxed. Take your blood pressure and write it down. 
in the evening when you're calm and relaxed, take your blood pressure, write it down. Do not check your blood pressure if you're upset or in pain or super tired because it's gonna be high, that's normal. But after a couple of weeks, when you start to feel that lightheadedness, you can call your doctor's office and say, hey, I've been eating a low carbohydrate diet. Here are my current blood pressure readings. Can I stop or decrease the dosage of my medication? And with the knowledge that you've been checking your blood pressure at home, and what your blood pressure actually was, your doctor will feel much more comfortable saying, yeah, it's okay, go ahead and cut that medicine in half or go ahead and stop that other medication. It sounds like you don't need it anymore. But if you just stop your blood pressure medication, then first of all, you're gonna upset your doctor and it may also cause problems for you medically. So don't do that on your own without consulting your doctor. I have several other videos about high blood pressure on this channel. I'll put a link to them down in the show notes. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.